I think Marianne was was the absolute perfect architect to design this building. Artists are very responsive and sensitive to beauty, and everywhere you turn in this building, it's inspirational. Tenacious would be the right word to describe Mary Ann because she truly is uh, very much a kind of advocate for ideas that really matter to her. This building's been in her life all the way through her, her existence in Toronto, so these are all very personal projects to her. And so I love the old, but I love the new. I love being part of the new, and I'm glad that there's no con no confusion between the two. You know, you know where you are immediately. You don't have to be an architect to realize that something very, very special has been created here for people who truly love music. Well, you know, she is tirelessly creative. I think she had a vision for what the RCM could ultimately become as a project. I think she felt it was very significant from a cultural perspective um, that it could make a huge contribution to the city of Toronto and to the arts community. And I knew it had to be really stunning, like something like the concert hall. It had to be a surprise and it had to be stunning. And I think, you know, with my team, we brought the spirit of doing something that nobody had done before in terms of concert hall. This was our first hall. Who gets to build a thousand seat concert hall in the city? So, you know, I had this notion about the veil, you know, how that would be the signature element. Um, she has incredible taste, and the design of the building itself is, is such a perfect marriage of the old and new, with such great attention to the materials to match and bring harmony to these two buildings. Well, in the 1980s, uh, the dignity of this majestic building had been severely undermined by decades of neglect, which resulted in um, the functional aspects of the building being severely deteriorated. The condition of the building at that time was a metaphor for the condition of the Royal Conservatory itself in those days of the modernization. It actually began with some very modest renovations that took place to the original historical structure, um, and then that followed up with the renovation to the Madison Hall, um, which is a fantastic small concert hall, I think it's about 230, and um, you know, that was the beginning of the renaissance for the RCM, I think it was from an architectural perspective. I, I have many sleepless nights. You, know, you there's a lot of risk related to this project. You know, risk of where, you know, whether whether you can fit a concert hall for a thousand seats on the site within the constraints. Whether you can make the levels work. Whether you can convince people to go with the material palette. Whether you can get them to invest in the project. The historic building was very much of a strong vibe to draw from the the context. Very, very strong urban indicators around the site as to what was how it should be developed and how we should respond to all, all four sides of our property. We took a, a, a sound from Leaderskin who said about the wrong touch lightly on the historic fabric. And so we said, let's pull the new away from the old. Let's honor the old by pulling away in the sense. And then the, the new doesn't have to be slavishly in its materiality. It doesn't have to contact the old. It can stand aside and, and be an honor. That was, you know, that was the strategy. I mean, it's, it's really interesting. You know, the, the RCM is part of the fabric of Canada. Uh, you know, through its examination system, its teachers across the country. Um, you know, it really is embedded in, in uh, Canadian culture, but it hasn't really been visible, if you will. I think it has much more visibility now. The facility that we have today is really a reinvention of the concept uh, of a building that fosters. Uh, and education. And I think the building ennobled the state of life of the people who work there. Public dollars that had gone into the, the cultural renaissance projects, this being one of them, uh, required uh, a lot of attention in terms of reporting, uh, pouring over critical paths, 
looking at construction schedules and being able to answer back into the policy of government. And working here at the Royal Conservatory, uh, Mary Ann made that very, very easy. I provided um, the vision and the constancy and the consistency of the vision from start to finish. Overseeing of details, not actually having to draw myself, but, but sketching and, and understanding and being the cons consult constant consultant. And there were times when you know, I would let you really fall right off the ladder for two or three months and just leave the team to work and let them figure out things and come back and then set the challenge again or restate the challenge and make sure that we had achieved it. I took courses from the conservatory, the Toronto Conservatory of Music as it was called, from about 1941 on. So, uh, you know, I've had a sort of contact with the conservatory going way, way back. There was a building committee, and I wasn't part of the building committee, but I attended some of the meetings, and there are always people who feel they know better than the architect. So one of my particular purposes of attending was to protect the architect's design and integrity from meddling. So there's a bit of diplomacy required, so I was involved as a backer and I wanted to make sure that we got uh, the integrity of the design. And we did, and that's why it's such a beautiful building. I remember coming into the hall uh, just before it opened, and walking into the hall, the hall was silent and there was nobody else in it. And it, it struck me what it had, I think I finally understood, and it's a personal thing, what it was that Marianne had achieved here. Uh, in a way, I could actually see the music without hearing any sound. Uh, the design was a wonderful, wonderful place. It was a gift that showed that she had a compassion for the artists, a compassion for the students who were going to play there, and a compassion for the audience. When a hall has beautiful acoustics, in my experience, it is in those halls that one of my most memorable and satisfying performances have taken place because you just uh, relax and you take risks. So any performance becomes spontaneous and just galvanized because you're taking risks and uh, you're free on stage. I think other people can accomplish something that is great. I believe in the capacity of people to do great things. But I think what we're witnessing here in this building and with this award is the recognition that someone has really grown with this project and developed a, a work of architecture that stands up in the world, in the world of architecture, and certainly in the world of music.